everybody. Happy Wednesday or, you know, webinar Wednesday as it is for us here at Lulu and all of you that have joined us today. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your, I'm sure, very busy schedules to spend an hour with us and hear a little bit about how to build out a bookstore and maximize profit. So I see a lot of you are already active in the chat and saying hello. So hello to all of you. And as always, good morning and good afternoon or good night. I feel like is that a Truman Show reference? Possibly. Um, so yeah. wherever you find yourself in your day, thank you for joining us and I hope you're having a great day. So we are gonna go ahead and get started here. So as you can see on our signature cat sunglasses slide, today's webinar is about how to build your bookstore and maximize profits. So this is gonna be all about, you know, you're thinking about your authorship as a business and thinking about the customer journey and really finding ways to connect directly to your readers, um, you know, rather than maybe going through us or Amazon or any other third party. Um, but we're gonna kind of cover all of it. So how you can get your books out there, how you can sell through your own website and, uh, you know, the solutions that we have available to you if that sounds appealing. So this is especially important to think about getting into the holiday season, even though I realize it's July, uh, but it's always, you know, never too soon to kind of start thinking about what your holiday sales tactics or strategies will look like and how to get prepared for that time of year. So we will go ahead and get right on into it. Classic information up first. Who are we? Lulu. Uh, which is a real word. So it's a remarkable person, object, or idea. We've been around since 2002, which doesn't seem like that long. But when you look at some of the longevity of, of uh, internet businesses or just businesses in general, doing pretty good. So founded in 2002 by Bob Young, who is also the co-founder of Red Hat. Uh, Bob co-founded Red Hat and then wanted to write a book about his experience and found the whole process very laborious, very time consuming, a lot of gatekeepers involved and just felt like there has to be a better way to do this. So he founded Lulu that is a free to use platform uh, where we are a home for anyone who has a story to tell. We allow you to tell it and share it with the world. So since 2002, we've published over a million books, paid out over a hundred million dollars in author revenues, and that number increases every day. So very exciting things that we have going on at Lulu. Uh, a little bit more about us is our mission. So we're dedicated to making the world a better place one book at a time through sustainable practices, innovative print-on-demand products, and a commitment to excellent service. So a little bit more about the sustainable practices. Uh, so we're a B Corp. I love this little factoid about Lulu, but so we are a for-profit company that has been certified by the nonprofit B Lab to meet rigorous standards of social and environmental performance, accountability, and transparency. So just do my little uh, plug for B Corps. If you're not familiar with the B Corp community, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's a great way to spend your dollars uh, and invest in a company that is uh, looking at keeping this world a, a beautiful and making it a more beautiful and sustainable place. All righty, so that's a little bit about Lulu. Who are we? <laughs> so I am Chelsea and I am our brand engagement manager. And I'm the marketing associate. I'll be monitoring chat today. Hi, I'm Lauren. I'm the social media manager. And I'm Paul. I'm the team's copywriter. Correct. All right, so we're going to dive right into it. First up, maximizing your sales options. Lauren, take it away. All right. Thanks, Chelsea. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, the different options that you have for how to sell your book. It is going to be a little bit Lulu based since obviously that's what I know best, but you'll find these options pretty much anywhere you go uh, in different forms in some way or another. Um, so one of the great perks, of course, about self-publishing is that everything is completely customizable to what's going to fit you and your plan, um, including how you sell your books. So you're not limited to one single sales format or distribution option. You can experiment with all different kinds of sales options. Uh, so Chelsea, if you can go ahead to the next slide. Sure. Thank you. Here at Lulu, we have three different types of options for how you can sell your book. You can, number one, sell on your site by using the Lulu Print API or the Lulu Express app for Shopify to sell directly from your own website or social media. You can also, two, sell through the Lulu Bookstore by uh, listing your book on Lulu's online independent bookstore, which reaches a global market of reader readers around the world. 
And option number three, you can sell through distributors around the world um, by connecting your book to retailers, libraries, and schools that uh, distribute through major retailers like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and Ingram, et cetera. Uh, so it's entirely up to you how you customize your own sales options. You can choose whichever ones work best for you, whether that's just one, two, or all three of these options. Um, you're also not confined to the choices that you make once you've made them. If you decide that you want to start out by just selling your book on the Lulu bookstore and then later decide that you'd like to uh, add the Shopify app to your own website and distribute globally, you can change that. You can change that option later and you can make that decision later. Because, you know, we understand. We know what's going on. We know you want your book on Amazon. Who doesn't want their book on Amazon? I want my book on Amazon and I've never written a book. We're not telling you that you don't need to have or shouldn't have your book on Amazon. We're just trying to tell you that there are other options for how you can sell your book, including through your own website and through our bookstore. Um, I think I need you to change the slide, Chelsea. My bad. We'll find out. All right, great. Uh, so we like to think that the more accessible your book is, the more you're maximizing your opportunities for sales, uh, because each of the sales and distribution options offer different unique benefits. Um, so for this first option, for the sell on your site option, uh, Chelsea and Paul are gonna go into much further detail on the specific benefits of using the Lulu Express app for Shopify and the Lulu Print API. So I'm not gonna go too in depth here. I'm just gonna say that for both of these options, selling on your site allows you as a business to have complete control over your sales. Um, so it's a, essentially an opportunity for Lulu to act as the white label printer for you while you focus on your customers. Um, I see a question in the chat about other links. Uh, we can't add links here, but if you visit us at lulu.com slash sell, you will see the options there. Um, okay, so for option number two, selling through the Lulu bookstore, it is the easiest of these three options. So if you're a beginner that's new to self-publishing and you're just getting started and you're still deciding what options will work best for you. Um, this one is the easiest one to get yourself up and running right away. Uh, some of the benefits of it are that Lulu does not charge distribution fees or production fees to print and sell through our site. So authors will retain 80% of the revenue earned from each book sold through the Lulu bookstore. And then option number three, sell through distributors around the world. Uh, that will get your book to the major online retailers, namely Amazon and Barnes and Noble, which we know are the two most commonly browsed online bookstores, at least in the US. Um, it also opens up the possibility of other retailers, both online retailers and brick and mortar locations uh, that, will, that could potentially carry and sell your book as well. So outside distributors and retailers do take a distribution fee from all book sales. So while this is the option that gets your book out in front of the most people, it's also the one that gives authors the lowest revenue rate. Uh, so let's take a look now before we get too in depth on the Lulu Express app for Shopify and the Lulu Print API at how you can sell your book through the Lulu bookstore and selling your book through global distribution. So if you could go ahead to the next slide, thank you. Uh, so first up, selling your book through the Lulu Bookstore, it's super easy. Um, when you start the publishing process, when you visit lulu.com slash create, this, literally the second step of the process will ask you what your publishing goals are. If you just want to print copies of your book, you want to sell them yourself, or you just want a couple copies for yourself, there's an option for that, that you just choose print your book. But if you'd like to publish your book for sale through Lulu and or through distributors, there are options for those as well. So when you choose sell your book on the Lulu bookstore, the publisher will then walk you through the steps that you need to have the book set up in our store. Um, you'll need to add some details about your books, like copyright information and your genre and the audience that you're trying to, you know, age audience you're trying to reach, uh, a couple of other things like BISAC categories and search keywords, which don't worry, we will explain all of that to you throughout the process. Um, and of course, you'll need the description or summary of what your book is so that people know what they are buying when they buy it. Um, but again, our new publisher will walk you through every step of that and explain everything you're doing along the way. So it's very easy to get that set up. Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, so then if you want to take it a step further and you sell through distributors around the world, um, in case you're not familiar with it, I know it's, it's not something that's really common knowledge how book distribution works. Um, 
retailers like Amazon and Barnes and Noble and even some like indie bookstores that that carry books like this, whether it's online or in brick and mortar stores, they don't just there isn't just like some massive database that they pull every published book that's ever been published and start selling it. They have to be given these books in order. They have to be given access to them. They have to be made aware of the fact that they exist. Uh, so that's where the distribution process comes in. And that's where we come in. So if you are, if you choose the global distribution op option, sorry, uh, Lulu will make your book accessible to retailers around the world, including those big ones that you want to be in. So how do you set yourself up for global distribution? It's a similar process to setting it up in the Lulu bookstore. It's just a little bit more uh, intricate, I guess. In that same step where you're going to choose publish on the Lulu bookstore, you can also choose an option for global distribution. And again, then in that case, the publisher will walk you step by step through the process to publish your book. Um, your book will need to meet global distribution requirements, which is a little bit different than if you're selling it directly from yourself or if you're selling it through just our bookstore. Um, there are some just standard requirements that all the publishers have to meet, whether it's self-publishing or traditional publishing or whatever it is. Um, but as long as you follow along with the steps that we outline in the publisher, you shouldn't have a problem with that. Um, you're going to have to include elements like a title page, a copyright page, table of contents, uh, certain pieces of information for the metadata, and a unique ISBN. Again. All of this gets included in the publishing process. If you're going through Lulu, we'll explain every step of that. We will even provide your ISBN for you if you need one. Uh, next up, you will need to order a proof copy. We do require proof copies if you are choosing global distribution. Uh, it's very important that you make sure that your book looks the way you want it to. There is nothing worse than finding out that there is a formatting error in your book after 100 people have already bought it. So we don't require that for any other uh, form of distribution or sales, but we do strongly encourage that you always want to get a proof copy. Um, in the instance of doing global distribution, you will be required to order a proof copy and approve it before you can go ahead and set it to distribution. Uh, and then last but not least, your book will have to be approved by the various distributors and retailers before it is a push, it's a officially pushed live on their sites. But once you've completed all of the above steps, it should be ready for approval. And then you can go ahead and have your book live on Amazon, on Barnes and Noble, and all other kinds of places online. So selling through the Lulu bookstore and through global distribution are clearly both great options, but they also have their limitations. So if you want to bring your business to the next level and truly maximize your sales options, you should also definitely consider selling directly from your own website. So I will pass this over to Chelsea now to tell you more about how you can use that using the Lulu Express app for Shopify. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. So yeah, as Lauren alluded to on the in the Lulu.com website and in that Lulu ecosystem, there are a ton of ways to get your book out there. Um, you know, as a summation, you can sell through the Lulu.com bookstore, distribute through Amazon, Ingram, and Barnes and Noble as well. So that's a great place to start. Uh, however, as she mentioned, you know, there's a way that you can kind of take this to the next level. And what we're seeing in, in the industry and just, um, you know, it, on the Internet, is so that more and more people are understanding that there are so many resources available to you to create the exact store experience that you want for your customers or audience, you know, regardless of what you sell or what industry you're in. There are more and more options and opportunities available to, you know, the, the entrepreneur to really create exactly what they're looking for um, for their business and for their brand and their persona as well. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is Lulu Express plus Shopify. So you, if you're not familiar, stay tuned. We're going to get right into it. All right. So first up, what is Shopify? So I wanted to start with a little bit about Shopify to help paint the bigger picture of the e-commerce landscape and Shopify's role in that ecosystem. So this first little line here is uh, all in, uh, is the description that I got from Shopify's website. So if you go kind of look at their about me or about us, they build themselves as an all-in-one commerce platform to start, run, and grow a business. So for the interest of our conversation, we're going to focus on the e-commerce part of their offerings. But it's important to know that, you know, if you ever are interested in doing a pop-up sale or once you integrate with Shopify, you know, if you're at a farmer's market or find yourself hand selling your books, then Shopify solutions can extend to in-person purchases as well. 
So a few stats here to get started is that, uh, excuse me, Shopify is one of the most popular e-commerce platforms on the planet and has almost 20% of the market share. That is a massive amount if you really think about all the business and transactions that go on on the internet. Um, another interesting thing is that Shopify is the third largest online retailer in the U.S. after Amazon and eBay. Um, actually, it surprises me that eBay is still up there, but you know we all got to get our used shoes somewhere. So, uh, third largest online retailer. So that's pretty impressive. The total revenue in the second quarter of 2019 was 362 million dollars. So that's a 48 percent increase. Um, from their revenue in 2018. So if you are have looked at the headlines at all or interested in kind of market watch or, or information or outlets like that, Shopify is always being touted as having just exponential growth um, and they just continue getting bigger and bigger. So it's not a bad kind of pony to saddle up to uh, if you're, when you're looking for the e-commerce game. So this next stat about Black Friday. So the Black Friday weekend is a very busy time for Shopify. In 2018, they made over 1.5 billion uh, in this in that sales period. So I wanted to highlight this and specifically mention Black Friday because I think it's a great opportunity for authors that you may not be aware of or you might not be thinking about. So everyone, especially this year, uh, shops online during Black Friday and Cyber Monday. So, you know, for Lulu as a business, we we look to that. I mean, that's a big weekend for us. And we look to doing promos and sales and making sure that we're prepared for that, um, for that sales season. Um, and so I would recommend that anyone, especially now as we see this shift towards more authors taking ownership of their sales experience of their customer journey, being prepared and set up ahead of the holiday season, specifically right around that Black Friday, Cyber Monday push can be really crucial to having a successful holiday sales season. Um, so yeah, I mean, like I said, so many people are shopping online during that time. So why not try and get in on that action and just be available um, for those customers or, or readers who are looking for what you have uh, to sell and what your books are about. So, you know, like I mentioned, getting your Shopify or API set up is just can be a huge boon um, to, your, to your year over year sales ahead of that season. So going back to our stats here, 87% of merchants use apps, of which the Shopify App Store offers more than 2,400. So that kind of will lead me into our app that we've created for Shopify. But again, you know, another thing, I have this uh, a little bit later in my slides as well, but one of the great things about Shopify is it really has an eye towards the longevity of your business. So all the, their app marketplace and all the available add-ons are just a part of that or a continuation of that. Uh, and by 2021, global e-commerce is forecasted to be 4.97 trillion. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. It's, it's a 400% increase in seven years. That's such fast and it gives in exponential growth. So if you're not looking at e-commerce, I hope that these uh, stats have compelled you to take another look. Um, you know, it's obvious here that e-commerce is growing and Shopify is leading the pack there. So that's a little bit about Shopify and what's going on. Uh, with them as an e-commerce solution. And here's a little bit more about their shopping pricing or tiers. So Shopify on this slide, I've put all the different pricing tiers that Shopify offers. But if you're unsure where to start, uh, Shopify has a 14 day trial, a free trial to play around with before you have to fully commit. So it's great to kind of get in there, play around, see which packages you're interested in, see what's working for you. Maybe you start with you know the basic and you feel like this may be too much. You can bump down to the light. Maybe you start at basic and you just need more. You're growing more. You're, you're seeing the peripheral opportunities outside of selling your book. And so you want to go up to the Shopify kind of the, the mid level. Um, but the 14 day trial is something I highly recommend everyone take advantage of. And as I mentioned, I mean, the Shopify app and the, the e uh, ecosystem that they've built is so great for the long term because of all the apps they have available. So you may start with just your books, but then you expand into selling other items that might be relevant to your content. So maybe artwork from your books, or if you're a nonfiction writer, maybe it's consulting services or other things that you may have that you can offer in conjunction with your book. So if you already have a website, Shopify Lite is a great option. 
Um, so with Shopify Lite, you can integrate with Shopify to include buy buttons to your Shopify store. Um, a wonderful thing about this is it already integrates with most websites, but uh, if you tuned in last week, I mentioned you know Wix, Squarespace, and WordPress. So Shopify Lite integrates really well with those, and it only costs nine dollars a month. So that can be a really approachable and accessible way to try Shopify um, and try our app out for something that's not going to break the bank. So this is a very easy solution. Um, if you don't have a website, the Shopify Shopify standard plan will provide you with a website and your store. So kind of an all-in-one solution there. However, as I mentioned, if you already have your website site up and running uh, and you're just looking for a way to sell directly to your readers, the Shopify Lite buy buttons can be a really, really nice way to kind of dip your toe in this um, and, and you know see if it's working for you and see what that looks like. So that is just a little bit of information about the different shopping tiers they have. Um, of course, this is all really easily accessible on the Shopify website, but the reason that I'm introducing you to Shopify and to the solutions they have available initially is because you will need to have this set up or need to kind of explore Shopify a bit before you can integrate, you know, get into their um, marketplace and look at their apps and then ultimately find the Lulu Express app for Shopify. That is what I will go on to next. So we have created an app for Shopify. So you may not be familiar with that or maybe unaware. It is called the Lulu Express app for Shopify. You may be thinking, okay, cool, but what is that? <laughs> so if you are familiar with Shopify at all, maybe before I, I my pre-ramble or preamble there, um, you'll know that everything is kind of on demand. And what's so great about this growing process and ecosystem of these online shops is that you don't have to worry about the inventory. Everything is done on demand, kind of at a, at a different site than your basement or your garage. So you're just handling kind of the, the aspects of growing your business and taking in orders and then kind of monitoring or keeping an eye on the fulfillment to make sure everything's running smoothly. But you're not having to take orders, then run to the back of the house and box something up and kind of check off and do this manually. That's what's so wonderful about all these on demand solutions. So Lulu has always been on demand. I mean, since we started in 2002, every book is printed when it is ordered. So inventory has never been something that we've been really fond of or have uh, kind of put on our authors to worry about or be burdened with. We've always kind of had that solution available. You know, as, as Lauren mentioned, selling through the Lulu bookstore, you're never gonna have to worry about inventory. So we basically just took that and integrated it with Shopify to make it a more seamless uh, experience for your readers. So. Lulu's Express app for Shopify is our on-demand book printing app for Shopify. It's the only one on the marketplace right now. So if you go and look at the Shopify app marketplace, you can get, you know, pillowcases, phone cases, skirts, t-shirts, cat pajamas, you know, whatever. You can get everything printed on demand, but you could not get books until now or uh, more specifically until about late 2018, I think, is when we launched this. So the great thing about this app is that it is free to use. So the you know Shopify has, as I excuse me, as I previously explained, a couple of different pricing tiers that you will need to um, kind of pay monthly. However, our app is free, so you won't have to worry about paying anything there. So you would just you know commit to whatever Shopify tier or uh, subscription that you want go into their app store, download our app, upload your books, and you can start selling. So it's pretty exciting. So a few key highlights here. It's automated print and fulfillment. So once you have your books up and running, people come to your website, you know, maybe they see a social post that you did or um, they, you know, go read a blog post and they love it or they see you at an event and they think, oh, you know, I want to hear more about their books. I'd love to buy them. They can do that from your website. So just imagine, if you will, it's going a little journey here that, you know, the old way or the way that you may be doing it now is that you create the book and you put it up on Amazon or you put it up on Lulu and you're working so hard to connect with your audience and find your readers. And they're like, oh, you know, yeah, I do want to read. So I'll use myself as an example. So yeah, Chelsea's great. I would love to read her book. I'm sure it's the best. So they get to my website. They want to learn more about me. They come to the part where they can buy my book and then I redirect them to Amazon or to Lulu.com to make that transaction. That's okay. Sure. I mean, that works. You know, we all have seen authors do that all the time. So we'll say, going back to my example, my reader who's so excited to buy my book clicks on the buy button. I send them to Amazon to make the transaction, but oh my gosh, wait, there are those light up tennis shoes I've wanted forever. I'm going to buy those instead. So uh, that might be an extreme example, but I don't think I need to convince anybody on this call how short our attention spans are. So it uh, could be very plausible that someone, you know, goes to Amazon to buy your book, has the best intentions of buying your book from you. Uh, however, they get distracted and buy something else or, 
you know, they see that other readers have bought or recommended reading uh, from Amazon and they're like, oh, well, you know what, this book is cheaper or whatever, I like this one better, so I'm gonna go with that instead. I mean, likewise on the Lulu website, you go bounce over to Lulu and you're like, oh, you know, I definitely wanna buy this book, but oh, you know what, I can write my own book and maybe I'll start doing that. And then you kind of get down this other rabbit hole. So what we're offering here, uh, and it's uh, the alternative to that is to find your readers, build your audience, send them to your website. When they get to your book information, they click buy, they stay on your website. They're not going anywhere else. There's no chance for them to get distracted. Well, I won't say that, you know, again, a lot going on these days, but we're kind of minimizing the risk of them bouncing from your website and going somewhere else and not making the sale. So as I mentioned, you know, we'll go back to these key highlights, but that's kind of the, the process that we're building or we're creating is that you find your readers, they come to your website, and then the transactions are all made right there. This is important because not only is it automating print fulfillment, and you don't have to worry about the, the inventory because you're connecting to our print fulfillment network, but you're getting transactional data from each sale. And I think this is something that not a lot of authors are, or, you know, that we talk to really consider or think about or understand the value of. But if you were with us last week in our audience building webinar, you'll know that it is so important to be building out your email list, to be building out your network so that you have this inherent group that is interested in the work you're doing. And so when you go to publish your next book or when you have a, a maybe a sale or a promotion that you're running, you already have an audience that has proven they're interested in your work that you can, um, you know, share these things with and promote this information to. So the, the transactional, transactional data really comes into play here because as your readers are coming to your website, you can get their email addresses, you can get demographic information, and you can find out who's buying my book. You know, new readers, this is great too, because you can see if you did a promo on social media or maybe you did an email campaign promoting your book, or maybe you even went to an in-person event and did a signing or, or did a talk. Then you can look at the data from your website, from your sales, from your Shopify dashboard and say, oh, wow, I had an uptick of selling my book right after I did that talk. That was a great audience for me. Or, wow, you know, I played around with the times I was posting social media ads. I see an uptick from this. And these are all emails that I didn't have on my list before. So that was a good investment. I'm going to do that again. So transactional data can be hugely valuable. And of note, I mean, you, you probably realize this already, but when you sell through Amazon or even Lulu.com's bookstore, we can't give you that transactional data because of privacy laws. So even though you can look on your fantastic Lulu dashboard and see, oh, I've sold you know X amount of books during this month, we can't give you the names or information of the people who are buying it. So this is a, a great solution and alternative to that because you can really market smarter and better by looking at the data and seeing who's buying the books and when. So that can be really, really powerful when you're looking to take your author, you know, maybe your writing that, that you look at as a hobby or something you're just trying out and really elevate it to the business level. So another great thing about our Express app for Shopify and our API, which Paul is going to talk about here in a minute, is that it's a white label service. So what I mean by that is that when you integrate with our Shopify app or our API, when a reader comes to your website, there's no indication that Lulu is powering that uh, that transaction or that capability. So you can really easily, um, I won't say easily because there is a learning curve and it does take time and an investment, just like anything else you wanna do well to do this right. But once you get your Shopify store set up, this can function as your own imprint. You can be a publisher at this point. So you don't have to have Lulu um, you know, branded on your books or anything like that. You can look like your very own publishing house, your very own imprint, and have a really seamless brand experience through you know, the first time you connect with that reader to the point where they are at checkout buying your book. So again, something that you may not think is valuable or important, you know, at Lulu, we obviously love when authors wanna talk about us and when they wanna put our logo on their books or have it on their website. Keep doing it, we love it, that's wonderful. But if you're at a point where you think, you know what, I want a bit of brand autonomy, I'm looking down the long road, I know I'm gonna publish several books, you know, um, under this imprint, and it's, that's gonna really take me to the next level to be able to kind of keep that seamless presentation. Something to think about. And last, but absolutely not least, is when you use our Express app for Shopify, you're keeping 100% of the revenue per sale. So if you're selling through the lulu.com bookstore, we have an 80-20 revenue split. So that means that if your book costs $5 to make and you are selling it for 15 on the Lulu bookstore, of that $10 of revenue, Lulu is getting two and you are getting eight. So it's 80-20 split right there. 
However, if you kind of take us uh, take us up on this express option, then when you sell that book, that same book that costs five dollars to make, you're keeping all ten dollars of that revenue. You're not splitting it with anyone. You're essentially cutting out the middle people, which is Lulu, and then you're keeping all the revenue. So I don't really think I need to harp on that. I think everybody understands why that's why that's valuable and important and appealing. But again, just a step further in really owning the customer journey and turning this into a, a business rather than maybe something that you're doing on the side or um, you know something that you're not really looking at for revenue purposes, this can be really important. All right, so uh, <laughs> up next. So that's Shopify, that is Lulu Express, but now you know maybe you're like, okay, that's cool. Now I know all about the advantages of using Shopify, but what does it actually look like in use? This is all a bit abstract to me now. Well, you know, uh, I don't want to disappoint anyone, but none of our solutions come with this image. You can find it online. I, when I was looking for this, for an image for this slide, I was just kind of thinking in the wild, okay, jungle exotic. And I Googled exotic and this was, you know, one of the first images that came up and I, and it's a blessing. I'm glad that happened. So this is the lovely Joe Exotic with one of his uh, his tigers, which I'm sure was probably one of the ones he treated really well. However, I wanted to show you guys what this looks like. So some folks who are actually using our Express app and what does it look like when you have this integrated into your website um, and you're selling through that. So we're going to leave Joe Exotic here and move on to Lily. So Lily Basinger is one of our Shopify users. She is a great candidate for this because she has, as you can see, a pretty healthy Instagram following. She's, I guess, I don't know what you would call her, a food influencer, or whatever, um, whatever terms we're using these days. Um, but you know, she's built this Instagram following and she just shares all these recipes that are very macro focused. Um, so a bit on the healthier side. It makes it really accessible for her followers. So they love her, they love the, the recipes that she shares and the way that she does her Instagram. So it was a really natural progression for her to, uh, to provide this content in a way that could make her a bit more additional revenue or passive income, as we say. So, you know, not only does her audience and her Instagram following and presence make her a perfect candidate for self-publishing, but also selling direct because she's already found her audience. So if any of you kind of have already found your niche or your corner of the internet where people are really enjoying your work and it's really resonating, then self-publishing and direct selling is such a great option for you because no one has to vet, you know, at Lulu, we're, we're open source publishing anyway, so it's not like we're gatekeepers. But when you go to a third party to sell your work like Lulu or like Amazon or Barnes & Noble or whoever, you know, you're, you're giving that away and helping and, you know, giving them the opportunity to connect with their audience. You've already connected with your audience. Lily already knows where her audience is and she knows that she can reach them directly and they want to buy from her directly. So she's such a perfect candidate for using our Shopify app. So here I've got, I just took a little screenshot from her website. So when you go over to her website and you click on, click on buy my book, this is, this, this is uh, the page that you're going to see. So this is her Shopify integration and what it looks like in the real world. So a lot of folks that use our Shopify app are doing what Lily's doing here. So she's offering the coil bound book, which is great, um, which is a, a, just such a wonderful format for cookbooks regardless. And then she's offering the ebook as well. So she's offering these in a bundle and she's selling them for 60 bucks a pop. So um, smart, savvy, and she knows that her that's that's what her audience is willing to pay. So you know, not only can you connect with your audience again on that really direct level, but you can also get a gauge for what are they willing to pay, well, how do they value what I'm saying in my content, and you just have so much more control when you're kind of taking it a step further with these solutions we're talking about today. So that is our first example. And I would recommend Lily Eats and Tells is how you can find her on Instagram. Um, she has a beautiful Instagram, a lot of great dishes there. So definitely check that out and buy her book. <laughs> All right, up next is Go Architect. So Go Architect is an independent media company on a mission to foster curious and creative confidence in order to unlock generations of innovators, leaders, and positive thinkers. That sounds pretty good. Sounds like a good uh, group to be involved with. So Go Architect is one of our earliest Shopify users, and they have, you know, as you see here, architect notebooks, children's books, these interactive uh, books over here, and world notebooks. They just have, they've made all these notebooks with just the different flags um, of, of several different countries. So uh, really expanding on kind of this journal or no content publishing, which we're seeing a lot of people capitalize capitalize on right now, which can be another great way of passive income. So here's just a snapshot from their homepage and you can kind of click into all these different cards to find more. I just went into their architecture notebooks 
And uh, here's what that shop looks like. So again, a really clean presentation, really seamless, really professional. Um, and it's a great experience for the reader or for the user. So I love them. I think that they're a, a great example of how you can, you know, create your shop and then evolve from where you started. So they were started with just these architecture notebooks. And as I said, or as I showed you, they've expanded into children's books, into architecture books, into other notebooks. Um, and this is, again, just great content that they're making one time and then it's available to sell, you know, indefinitely. So it's not something you have to continue tweaking. Once you have your book up and it's good to go, then you can just have that in the background selling all the time, you know, in your sleep when you're, you know, quarantining, whatever, whatever you're doing, your book can be selling for you and making money. So that's really exciting. So Go Architect is a great example. Check them out, goarchitect.com. They also, uh, as a just total aside, have recently started design classes um, and have a children's book design class that is powered by Lulu Express as well. So check that out if you are interested in children's books. All right. And last but not least here, Phoebe Garnsworthy, excuse me, Garnsworthy, her website is a complete experience, and I just encourage all of you, it's lostnowhere.com, go there. It's just a great, great website. I mean, it's really, really next level, really fun, interactive. She is a fiction author that's based in, in Australia, and I mean, when you're there, it's just a complete experience, very immersive, and she like, wants you to be dropped right into this world that she has built, and she does such a great job doing it. So this is just a little image, her hero image from her homepage, which is wonderful. Uh, and then here we can see how she has her book set up on there. So right on her homepage, you can scroll down and see where uh, where she has all of the, the books listed. Um, she has great descriptions. Then you can see the buy now button at the bottom. But again, great presentation and, and just really compelling when you're on that site. So anyone who's in that phase of, you know, maybe you haven't built your author website yet. And if you haven't, I strongly encourage you to go look at our building, our audience building um, webinar from last week, where we kind of talk about some of the pro tips of getting your website up and running. But uh, if you aren't, aren't there yet, she has a, a great example of what this can look like in an author, especially for a fiction author, someone who's really brought the world of their fiction books and their topics into an immersive uh, experience on their website. So again, really seamless. Nothing about Lulu on here, which is totally fine. You know, this is all Phoebe's show. From start to finish, you are in this world that she's built. So again, you know, three really great examples of people who are actually using the app to create that really seamless transaction um, and, and wonderful kind of reader experience, keeping them on the website and in this world that she's made. So I love that. Okay, so to close it out here, we're going to end it with Business Wolf. <laughs> and I wanted to give you some pro tips uh, from our, our Shopify team here that uh, just some some quick tips to kind of get you started or some things to think about as you are exploring what Shopify and Express could look like for you. So if you go into Shopify, there is a way to create a developer account. And this is a really great way to experiment, tinker, and learn about Shopify without having to pay. So you can get really familiar with the Shopify ecosystem with no money down. So if you're um, interested in that, you can just Google creating a developer account on Shopify, and you can kind of really geek out in the best way possible. Um, and you know all the things, that, all the ins and outs of Shopify. And if this is something you're really interested in and you see this as kind of a foundation for your your publishing journey or your authorship journey in the long term, it's definitely worth your while. So although Shopify has a ton of support, we have support for people using our Shopify solution. It's always good to kind of go into something and have a framework for how it works and what you can expect from it so that, you know, when you're working with someone who, you know, maybe Lulu support or Shopify support, you can understand what they're telling you and know how to implement it. So I would highly recommend that. I've heard, um, you know, from our Shopify team, they say that all the time. So I would recommend checking that out. Another thing here that is very important that you may not be thinking of right off the bat is check out the information available on Shopify regarding how to handle taxes or speak with a professional. So it's something you might not think about. You're excited. You're going to sell directly to your readers. Finally, you're kind of breaking the wall and getting straight to them. No more gatekeepers. It's you and them. And then you kind of realize at the end, like, oh, IRS, that's a thing, right? Taxes. So, so we would recommend looking on Shopify on how to handle your taxes or speak with a professional. At Lulu, we are not tax professionals. So if you send in a question to our support team, they will try and help you the best they can. But at some point, we're just going to say, hey, you know, you're going to need to talk to a tax advisor about this to make sure everything is kosher and up and running correctly. So that's another little tip for you. And last but not least here, you heard Lauren talk about proof copies a bit in the beginning. But when you get your books up, uploaded, and ready to go within our app for Shopify, 
check the preview tool and make sure that everything looks good and always, always order a proof copy before you go live. So, you know, the great thing about uh, this, this uh, solution or API and sharing this content now is that you have plenty of time ahead of the holidays to really research, get your ducks in a row, order proof copies, make tweaks, make um, edits if you need to. You know, as Lauren said, there's nothing worse than putting your book out there, feeling, you know, having that sigh of relief that it's done, it's out there, you know, I'm ready to share it with the world, see orders rolling in, and then find out that like chapter five is missing half the pages or there's an error or, you know, whatever can go wrong. Um, Murphy's Law type thing. You want to anticipate these things and plan for them. So by taking advantage of this information we're sharing today and beginning to implement it, you know, it can be in baby steps. You have the time to really build up a great experience and sort of get all these questions answered before you need to go live or before you'd like to go live. All right, so that is all about our Express app for Shopify. Um, as Lauren mentioned, if you go to our website, lulu.com slash sell or sell on my site, I believe, um, then you can find information about all of these solutions. And last but not least, I'm gonna kick it over to Paul, who's gonna talk to us about our API. Hey everybody, thanks Chelsea. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about this very, very technical aspect of uh, Lulu's print offerings. So, this one is going to be very, very in-depth, in, or not in-depth, it's going to be not in-depth because it gets into a highly technical coding, website building aspect of how you can use print on demand. So it's one of those things that I think doesn't apply to the vast majority of our Lulu users, but because of the way we built our technology, it's available. And so it's important to know that this option is out there and for the people that can take advantage of this, it is very, very useful. Um, so let's jump on to that next slide, awesome. So we're gonna just have some fun with acronyms for a moment here. Um, what is an API? Well, it stands for Application Programming Interface, which when you read that, probably doesn't make it all that much more understandable. And then I grabbed this definition from Wikipedia, which sort of helped me understand what it means a little. Now I'm not very good at coding, so I can barely make a text link with HTML, uh, much less code an API into a website. But in preparation for this webinar, I spent a lot of time reading about APIs. And basically what an API is, is it is a way to make it so two pieces of code can talk to each other. And that's oversimplifying it, but it lets code be written in such a way that regardless of how the rest of a piece of code is built, this thing, these two things can talk to each other. And so Lulu's print API is a way for whatever code you've created, your website, um, you know, however you've built that, to talk to our print network. Um, the benefit there being that if your website can talk to our print network, you can ask our print network to print books for you. So basically what you're doing is you're building in a way a, a phone line, essentially, a little phone image there, thanks, Anna, um, to let your website talk to our print network, which then lets you order books, um, which is pretty darn useful. And if we can hit that next slide, here are some of the uses we've seen um, for our API to date. Primarily used by businesses, publishers, and educators to do um, businesses a lot of times do manuals, guides, uh, annual reports. These are the kinds of things that they're printing regularly, but they don't need to, uh, you know, the, the ordering them is like a one-off order from us or any other printer was kind of a hassle. Whereas if they can, cause then they've got, you know, a thousand copies of this annual report that they've got to hand out or print uh, ship to their individual employees. You know, everybody's working from home right now, that sort of thing. Whereas if you can plug it in and you can just have your employee go and fill out a little form that says, you know, name, shipping address, and, you know, employee identification or whatever, and get that report shipped directly to them on a one-off basis, no inventory to store, no, uh, you know, facilitating the organization of shipping and things like that. We handle all of that on our end, which is what Lulu primarily does, prints and ships books. And then you just plug that right into your website and your website, when you need it, comes to us and says, hey guys, print these books for me and we do it. Um, publishers, so it's a great tool and it's kind of a hard thing to tell whether Shopify, which is which is using our API for 
to, to clarify. So Shopify app, the Shopify app, uh, Lulu Express, it is just a front end application of this API that we have built for Shopify. So we basically built our, a way for our API to be displayed on Shopify for you so that you don't have to go through the coding process kind of just simplifying the whole process. And then of course, if you're using Shopify, you're paying them for the e-commerce side of it. Um, if you are perhaps a bigger publisher or if you run a publishing website or a bookstore website, it may not be appealing to pay for Shopify. Perhaps you already use a different e-commerce engine or perhaps you uh, have your own built-in you know, cart or something like that. Um, but you still want to take advantage of print on demand. So if you're using, if you've already got a website built that captures payment with something other than Shopify, you can use our API so that when someone pays for a book through your website, they use whatever e-commerce engine you've provided. And then the, the API call comes through to our platform to print it for you. Simple as that. And again, the beauty of this, especially for publishers and bookstores is that you can list a backlist forever. There's, there's no need to like backlists used to be such a tricky thing because, you know, here is this 40 year old Stephen King book that we know people are going to buy occasionally, but how many of them do you stop? You know, do you buy a box of 50 copies of the stand and just have it on the, the you know, sitting in a warehouse somewhere for the two or three copies you're going to sell a year. And then what happens when they put out an edition with a new cover or, you know, they add a forward or some craziness like that. You have to be ready for those things, which means the ones you have are now overstock and they're useless. And so print on demand lets backlists basically be evergreen because files just get changed and they get ordered exactly as the orders, or I'm sorry, they get printed exactly as the orders come in. Um, educators, likewise, we've seen some schools make use of this tool to uh, share textbooks, custom textbooks. And this is generally not like, you know, big schools will have deals with McGraw Hill and those jerks. But if you've got, you know, a smaller school that's built their own textbooks, their own curriculum books, things like that. You can connect again, get your stuff shipped directly so you don't have a bunch of books and notebooks in stock at the school that take up space and cost money up front. And we can do direct shipping through a form that you build on your website, things like that. So it's, it's a very versatile tool. And the main difference between this and something like our Shopify app is that when you're using our print API, you're just taking the actual literal code that connects to our website, our, I'm sorry, our uh, print platform, and plugging it into your own website, which is where we get into that very technical part that I don't know anything about. Um, very fortunately, we do have a great API uh, spokesperson at the at Lulu who you can contact um, through our, as Chelsea was saying, our sell on your site page on Lulu. There's a contact form for her right there. You can you know, walk through the steps of how that works and get explained better some of the ins and outs and details. Um, and we can always help you, you know, look at the documentation. I, there's a huge, it's almost like a book in itself on our uh, developers portal that goes through how to implement this code and how to plug it into your website. But it is very, very important to, you know, understand that if you're building a bookstore online and you don't want to, you know, pay a premium to a site like Lulu or Amazon or Barnes and Noble, to be your retailer, you can do this entirely on your own. That is the beautiful thing about an API is you plug it in, you own it. You're just, you know, sharing files with us to request print jobs. And let's jump to that next slide. Thank you. And here are some links. Um, this api.lulu.com slash docs one is where I said that big long document is that's going to explain a bunch of things and have a bunch of code snippets that don't mean a lot to me um, and may not mean a lot to you, but if you're working with a developer who wants to implement or that you want to have implement this API, that's the information they're going to need. Um, and then to kind of quickly go through how this works, which I think is important because it's a little trickier than your normal print on demand process. So normally with print on demand, <clears throat> excuse me, you create your files, you come to the our site and you upload them, put some information in your metadata, your title, et cetera, et cetera. Set a price, publish it. It's good to go. It's off for sale. With the API, it's a little bit different because what you're doing is you're contacting Lulu's print network to say, please print this file. And every time you do that, you're, you're telling us which file to print. So what you have to do is you have to use this uh, pricing calculator that I've linked to here. 
And when you do that, and I'm, I'm, if you guys haven't checked out Lulu's pricing calculators, um, you know the one on Lulu.com on the homepage is great. This one is the same thing. It's just a little bit different skin, so it works with the API. But it is a phenomenally useful way to select your specifications, your page count, all of the information about your book, and see what it will cost, get some bulk discount ideas, get an understanding of what shipping costs might be. Very, very useful. So when you're building with the API, you have to use this calculator you tell us, you know, I am creating a U.S. trade, black and white, 200-page paperback book with a matte cover. You tell us all that, we give you something called a SKU code. And then when you build your API, that SKU code gets used to tell us what specs to apply to the file that you provide, right? It's all this code language happening. So that when you plug things in, the SKU plus the location, which can be like a Dropbox or something like that, where the file lives, you tell us that location as well, that URL, plug in the API, and when your site calls our site and says, hey, can you print this file for us? Here's the SKU code that tells you how to print it. We have all the information we need, goes through our process, a bunch of you know, printer elves run some machines and turn some knobs and stuff, and books get popped out and shipped. And yes, I massively oversimplified the, the technical side of this because it is very technical, but this is, in the truest sense, a way for you to build your own publishing website or bookstore. So as an author, you know, it's, it's insane to me when I go to an author's website and I, I see their homepage, it's got this beautiful header and graphics and this little snippets about them and they've got a great blog and then I get to their books page and rather than being able to buy the book, there's a link that says buy this on Amazon. It's like, well, yeah, that's cool, and like, it's great because I've got Prime, and I do want to read this right away, so I love the fact that I'm going to have it in a couple days, but I am giving half of the cost of that book to Amazon. I, I'm really just helping Jeff Bezos buy another helicopter or something, whereas if you're using something like Shopify or the API, you're keeping all of that revenue in the author's hands, and I think that is the most important thing about this is that it, it brings all of that revenue earning potential and control right into the author's hands. And uh, that's the, the last bit I have on this. Like I said, it is very technical, um, but if, if you run a website and you've got a developer or you're interested in doing that, the API is a terrific option to really take complete and full control um, and be sure to yeah, reach out. Anna just uh, posted the, the uh, link there to talk to our specialist if you're interested in this. See if it's right for you, learn some of the ins and outs on it, and uh, really just get out there and build your own bookstore. Awesome. Thank you, Paul, for giving us some information about that. And yeah, just to kind of reiterate and touch on, I see a lot of you guys are asking for more information about the API. Uh, so we have some great resources available for that, but you guys have given us some really good ideas as well. So um, you, know, you can check out our, our YouTube channel at lulu.com. We have some tutorials for the Shopify side. I believe we have, uh, there's a which Lulu is right for you. And we talk about our API there. But Definitely kind of get that on the schedule to get some uh, some more tutorials around the API solution. Um, and as Paul mentioned, you know, on our site, uh, Anna just put the, the email address to get in touch with Sarah, who is our API uh, kind of manager over that brand. But if you go to lulu.com slash sell um, or the sell on your site tab on our website, then there are a couple forms that pop up, um, one for Shopify and one for API. So if you are interested in this, but you do have questions or you're not sure what this could look like for you, or if you're a good candidate for it, or if it's a good candidate for you and your business goals, um, then please feel free to fill out that form. Um, you know, we've got great teams behind both of these. And if you need some extra help or explanations, and they're more than happy to jump on the call or jump on a call with you or, um, you know, video and walk you through what this could look like and how they can help you get onboarded for both of these things. So we're running out of time here. We've just got, you know, a couple minutes left before, uh, before we'll end it for the day. So Anna um, or Lauren, I know that you guys have both been in chat. Are there any questions that we have not answered that we need to answer or any other questions that you guys have um, we can answer for you within the last few minutes here. So I actually see one that just popped up from Cindy um, in one quick sentence. What is the difference between Shopify and API? Um, Shopify is a plug and play thing where all of the tools are visual. You click on, you know, different parts of the store and build it through Shopify and you pay them for that monthly. 
API is code, it's HTML code, and you have to build it into your website yourself. Yep, I think that's a good explanation. Sorry, that was probably a run on sentence, but I had it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the way that I kind of, and again, this is an oversimplification, but basically the API is for those of you who have access to the back end of your website or you have a coder on staff and can take advantage of, you know, implementing a line of code. For anyone who isn't there yet, or maybe just wants to sell on their social media channels, or you know doesn't have access to the back end of their website, going the Shopify route can kind of you know take care of all that stuff for you. You just pay Shopify a flat fee, uh, a, a monthly fee, and then they'll kind of handle the e-commerce situation and transactions for you. Um, I don't know, Paul. I'm sure you mentioned this, but the API is also free to use. Oh yeah, um, it is. Yeah. So just like everything, you know, uh, most of the. Uh, things we have to offer in the Lulu uh, ecosystem, uh, our API and Shopify solutions are free. Yeah, I do think I neglected to mention that. So thank you for, for bringing that up. All right. Yeah, no worries. All right. Well, if, if there are any other questions, I will. Um, oh, let's see. Great timing, Bruce. So Bruce is asking, how do I get my book into bookstores? Do I send them a copy first and then more copies? So this is a great question and it really is a, you know, a case by case basis. So there's a couple of different ways to approach this. And we do have a, a Lulu U video on how to get my book into bookstores that could be helpful and may answer some of your questions there. So again, you can just type in Lulu University um, bookstores, I think into YouTube and that should come up. So, uh, but I'll kind of try to summarize this um, while we have a few minutes left. So. Depending on the bookstore you're looking to get into, I mean, that can be if it's a local bookstore or not a chain, you may have a relationship with them. And I would always recommend to uh, go in there, buy their books, be a customer, be a friend of the store uh, before you kind of ask them to carry your books as an independent author, because it is a, a liability. They are taking on a risk by trying a new author, by taking on these books. So try to plant those seeds or build that relationship before you need to go in asking for things. And as an as a side, that probably works for a lot of different things. <laughs> so you want to have that working relationship before you go in and start asking for stuff. So for the bookstores, uh, you know, if it's independent, you can go and talk to them and say, hey, you know, I'm a fan. I, I support you guys. I've got this book out. Would you like to take it on? And you can kind of work out some sort of commission basis with them directly. You have the books in bulk and, and you can work that out with them. However, uh, another option would be to list your book on Ingram's catalog and you can do that through Lulu. Um, you know, there are other ways to do it as well. I think someone in the chat, I mentioned Ingram Spark. You can go either way. So if you publish on Lulu and your book is distribution eligible, you can be listed on Ingram's catalog. And a lot of bookstores and libraries as well won't take on a book that isn't available in Ingram's catalog because Ingram has kind of the wholesale market tied up. I mean, they're, they, they, they have the process down for, um, you know, things that get sent back or extra inventory or buybacks and all of that. So they have that process already worked out with bookstores um, and libraries. So if your book is listed on Ingram's catalog, that can be sort of, um, you know, for some bookstores, kind of a make or break because they are probably doing all their ordering through Ingram. And so having your book on that list is going to make it a bit easier. But like I mentioned in the beginning, it, it can be very case by case. So these are conversations you want to have with, with whatever bookstores you'd like to be featured in. Um, there are also solutions that are available that, that all they do, uh, one that comes to mind is uh, called Dart Frog. That's D-A-R-T. F R O G. And a lot of their business is just getting independent authors into bookstores. And so they've negotiated contracts with a lot of independent bookstores around the country um, to host these independent books that have been vetted by Dart Frog. So that could be an option as well. Um, but I, you know, there's there, that, that whole topic can be a bit nuanced. Um, you know, Lauren, you, you may have something that I missed or could maybe correct if I went off on a tangent there that's not relevant, but um, there are a lot of different uh, things that can go into this. So it's all about having that communication with the bookstore you're looking to be hosted in. So what did you say, Lauren? I think you covered it. Just okay, good, 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 good. good. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll take this one last question. Um, let's see. From D. Davis, I had several books printed several years ago and ordered them to sell myself. You have a lot left to sell. Oh, sorry to hear that. I paid Lulu to sell them on other bookstores. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, well, uh, so I think the question you're asking, if I understand it, is that you have some books that you've already bought that you have printed at your house and you want them, to, you want to sell them through the Lulu bookstore. If I'm understanding that correctly, that is unfortunately not something we will be able to take on for you. If you want to sell your books through the Lulu bookstore, you're kind of 
um, you know, accepting the, the no inventory um, sort of policy, I guess, that we have in place, which is just the print on demand underpinnings of our business. So at Lulu, whenever you have your books that you want to sell through Lulu.com bookstore, you publish them through Lulu. They're up on the store as a reader comes to our website, buys a book. We automatically print and fulfill that. So you don't have to worry anything about inventory or anything like that. Uh, but because the process is so automated, there's really not uh, an option available for us to have physical inventory and store that. So unfortunately, if you do have books that you are trying to sell, I would recommend just putting them, you know, putting a listing up on your website. As orders come through, you can hand fulfill them that way. But really, I think the key to selling those books is going to be exposure. So getting people talking about them, um, you know, the least popular answer is probably write more books so that those will, as those become popular, then your backlist may see a bump with that as well. You could also give them away and that can be a lead magnet or a way to raise awareness about future books you may have or just other things that you're working on. So that's kind of a long and short answer for you there. Uh, so I think uh, we are at 1 p.m. So I'm going to cut you guys loose and let you get on with your day no matter where you are in that process. Um, Paul, Lauren, or Anna, is there anything else you guys want to add before we sign off for the day? Nope. Not that I can think of. Perfect. All right. I guess we did it all then. Okay. Well, as a reminder, this recording will be sent out to everyone. So if you had to leave early or join us late, you can catch it there. We'll also post it to our YouTube channel. Um, so please visit us there and you can check it out in our other videos. Our blog is a great resource as well. So Paul is the blog master. So please check that out for any information regarding things we talked about today. Um, Lauren is our social media manager, does excellent work, excellent content out on the interwebs. Please find us at lulu.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Keep an eye out for our next webinars, which are yet to be determined. So if you have any ideas or thoughts, let us know. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you again next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.